he gives us his strength. Um, we know that we can stand with him without fail. In our scriptures today, in Isaiah 40, 31, I'm going to be reading from those today. Isaiah 40, 31 and Philippians 4, 13. But in Isaiah 40, 30, 31, it says, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. So as I was reading that over, the first thing that came up to my mind was that it kept saying, will, we will, we will, we will, you will, I will. And it's because, um, when I read, when I looked up those words, the word will, we just take it for granted. It's a four letter word. It's I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And yes, I'll be there because I, that's what we're going to do. It's just a word we all, all use on a regular basis. But what kept coming to my mind when I researched that word, it says it expresses the future. It says what we will do in the future, regardless of what we're going through. It expresses in a, in an inevitable event. We are committing to that, to do that. And God has committed to us to give us the strength. And because he has committed to us that we are stronger, that's why we are stronger to get through everything that we have to get through. Um, and an inevitable faith, it means no matter what, and no matter what, we will be able to get up and keep going no matter what, even when we're faint, which means um, lightheaded, weak, uh, dizziness, close to unconsciousness, faint so that you are so you're not you don't think you're going to be able to keep going forward. But his he promises that he will get us through no matter what. And you can if you can close your eyes and imagine. I, I don't know when if you've ever seen any of the pictures i know in alaska where sister carol's at she has the ability to see these eagles that are flying they always show pictures of these there's canyons and areas and it's one of my dreams to go there one day to see these eagles just soaring um in the air and, and just how they can float and no fear of falling or as they swoop and swirl and, and chase each other and and there's even one where there's eagles that are in the air and they clasp claws together, two of them. And as they fall through the air and you think that they're going to fall, they don't. And you just can imagine your hands clasping God's hand. He's holding you so tight, no matter what you're going through in that turmoil, in that fall to the earth where you're going to crash. And all of a sudden, at the last minute, they come apart and they continue to fly and climb into the heavens again. And that's what I got when I was saying soar like an eagle. It's just something that, you know, it's a prayer that we say. But the visual for me as I started seeing that was like, it was awe-inspiring. It's like, yes, we can soar no matter what we're going through. And in, um, see where my notes are here. In 2 Corinthians 12, 8 through 9, Paul speaks of his thorn in his side. And he says, he asked God, he pleaded, he pleaded with God to remove that thorn from him. Our, our problems, our struggles. And in my case, it was when I had COVID and I struggled and I cried. And such a vivid, vivid image where I cried to God and literally said, I, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. And God literally took me by his hands and he said, I know, but I can, I can get you through this. I will get you through this. I will. It is inevitable event that he was going to get me through that. And I have to have that faith to understand and believe that no matter what, no matter what sisters, what we are going through, we may feel that there is no way we're going to be able to go one more day, but God will, he promises, his promises 
endure forever. There is nothing that he cannot do for us in our lives. He says by his stripes, we are healed. We are healed. It may not be in our time, which I learned. My time was in two weeks, three months, six months, a year, two years. I'm healing. I'm still healing. But by the grace of God, he has healed me already. And I have to stand on that faith and that rock that he's getting me through it. No matter what, he can get you through whatever you're going through. No matter what, it's a promise. Regardless if it's a marriage that you're struggling with, if it's trouble at work, if it's finances, he will get you through. He promises. That's why we are stronger than we think. We are stronger. We don't stand on our own strength. We stand on his strength. Um, it's in his time that, that we always have to believe. It's in his time. And it can be tomorrow, but it doesn't matter what we think. It doesn't matter what our time frame is, we will never understand that. That's just as if they say, people say God's coming, the end of time is coming. And then people start focusing on the end of times that are coming, that they're here, they're here. We know they're here. But again, just because man says so, doesn't mean it's going to happen tomorrow. We've seen it over and over and over again. 2000. Everything was going to crash and come to an end. Here we are in 2023. We're still here by the grace of God. We're still here. He's seen us through. He's getting us here. Whether we're here in 2095 or 2495, it's in God's timing. And we have to stand on that because as his word is here for us, we can depend on him. We can depend on his strength and we he promises that it says another scripture that we were I was reading on, which is Philippians 4 13. It says, I can do everything through him who strengthens and empowers me. Strengthens and empowers me. He says, in power, when I read up some of the words in that, it says, Well, everything, all things is everything. Predetermined everything. He predetermined what we could get through. Not what we thought we were going to get through, but he predetermined everything for us to get through. And he was going to give us the strength to get through it. Not us, his strength. And it says empowers, he empowers us. This was the amplified version. And in the amplified version, it says to fulfill his purpose, I am self-sufficient. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses me with inner strength and confident peace. So we are to have inner strength, inner strength. And in Ephesians 3.16, it says we will receive the power of inner strength from the Holy Spirit. So again, he's giving it everything to us to get through what he needs to get through. We need to get through. It doesn't matter. And we are to have confident peace, confident peace in Philippians 4, 7, because we are to have peace of God that surpasses all understanding. So again, rely on his word that he's going to give us the peace. He's going to give us the Holy Spirit to see us through from the inside, not because we're physically strong, because Lord knows I am not physically strong. I was not physically strong, not where I was at even three months ago, a year ago, two years ago. Physically, I am healing. And I'm standing on the promise that he will make me whole again. Whole. Because he said so. Because God promises so. Because the Holy Spirit is going to give me that strength to move forward. One step at a time. He promises to carry us through when we need it. To be our strength. To get us where we need to be. And we need to continuously stand on that word. Um, it says, when we think of, um, he called me to do his purpose. He called us to do his purpose. 
he gave us authority. It, remain, it remains through him who has given us all authority. And what is that authority? It's God's power. It says, um, I was looking at the word empower, and it says to authorize, to sanction. It's an, ofi an official permission that he has given us. He, he strengthens us through health and nourishment, and he commissions us to do a pro uh, to, to produce something it's a reason for acting a particular way so his purpose for us is to go forth and spread his word to go forth as his soldiers we are his daughters we are to stand on his strength just as jesus christ knew without a doubt his will had to be done. God's will had to be done. We have to stand on that faith, knowing that God's will will be done in our lives. He has commissioned us to go forth with power, rely on his power. I don't know how I can say that over and over again. It's not my strength. It's his strength. And I have to, to just absorb it, absorb it and believe it that every moment that every time I wake up in the morning, it's in his strength. If I don't wake up in the morning, people need to know that's okay. We want people to understand and see our lives that we lived for his purpose, not for our purpose, not what we're thinking we need to accomplish in life, not doing. Um, we were raised to think a certain way. It's just like we were raised to think in a certain way in regards to the healthcare system that doctors, we were taught that doctors were going to get us better no matter what. Now I know it's not the doctors that I have to believe in. It's the mighty physician, his strength, his wisdom, his guidance can give the doctors information, but it's his will that will see us through. Um, I just know that we need to stand on that because by his stri stripes, we are healed and we can rely on that. He is our rock. He is our salvation. And we just need to continue to turn to him, get in his word, absorb his word. And I know, um, that's something that we each do, but we struggle with this. I know I do. I know it's something that we can get up and know when I pray in my head, no matter what and everything, it says, seek him in all things that we do. Before we walk out of the, the house, seek him for wisdom. Ask God to bring those people into your lives that you need to touch. Ask them to ask him to guide you each step of the way before you get in the car, before you turn on the car, ask him to guide you so that you're relying on him no matter what, because he is our strength. And we need to continue to rely on that on a daily basis. Um, you are stronger than you think because God promises to be our strength and that he gives us inner strength through the Holy Spirit. We don't have to rely on ourselves. We can have confident peace and we don't have to understand it because he gives us that peace that surpasses all understanding. Remember, it's not us sisters that we need to rely on. It's him. Um, I don't know. I'm like not used to using my PC here. So I'm kind of not watching the chats or anything. I don't know if this time we need to have any prayer. If you have any prayer requests, that's what I have for today. But I would love to pray for you. I hope this word ministered to you as it ministered to me as I was studying for it, how we can rely on him and, and not ourselves. We can always turn to him no matter what. Rely on his word. He's given us his word to seek wisdom and guidance in a daily manner to just go forth. This Pastor Nia, just continue to pray for families, especially during this holiday season, that God continues to pray for families. Families, okay. The Dillard family, okay. For all of our families.
That's the good morning. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Good morning, Sister Vivian. I just want to say that was a good word set right on time that we don't know what's really in us. So I appreciate you and the sacrifice you made to make sure that you brought us this word. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just, I'm grateful for us to all, for, to us for all being here. I know we're, it's either early in the morning or late at night and for us to take the time to be here. You know, it's a blessing. We come here seeking his word. So that's that's all we can do. Pray for Uncle Tony. Okay. Because uh, Sandy's Tony. Okay. Oops. And we want to continue to pray for, for Wakisha as well. Yes. With her mom. Okay. Anybody else have anything? I'm going to go ahead and start praying. All right. Father God, we love you. We give you thanks and we give you glory. Thanks for your your word, Lord. We ask. We just praise you. We we just thank you for the song that we heard, Lord, that we are, we want to be God chasers. We want to seek you and chase you and know that you are our strength through all of our situations that we're going through. Um, these holidays can be rough, Father God, where the world has made it so about finances and and just the whole craziness of shopping and and being out there and people people can get ugly out there lord but we want to focus on you we pray that we can be that guiding light to others father god that, that we can teach them and show them that you above all else are the reason for the season not not the man in the red suit not the gift giving father god but that you are our gift, Father God. You have brought us more than anyone can imagine. Our salvation has been bought by your blood, and we thank you for that. That is the greatest gift of all, Father God. And we just thank you for your love and for your precious son that you allowed him to come down to heaven to to save us father that is the gift that we should be thankful for and that we should be sharing with others that we can go out and minister to others and just share by our actions by our smile by the love pouring through us that we can show others what the true gift of Christmas is, Father God. This can be a really hard time for those that have lost loved ones, Father God, who do not have someone in their lives, in their homes to um, be with at this time, Father. Uh, there's different ways where we can be with people. Uh, if we see someone lonely, Lord, we can just give them a hug, give them a smile, and let them know that they are loved, Father God. I just pray for mental health father god in this situation in this time of the year it can be so hard for other people father god and i just pray that you would um envelop them with your presence and your love and peace father god bring them peace that surpasses all understanding father god for those out there lord jesus we lift up our families um the dillard family cassandra's uncle for healing um, Devana's family, well, each and every one of our families, Father God, we lift them up to you. We ask for your blessing upon them, for your protection um, as they go throughout the day, driving, being out there in the public. I mean, Lord Jesus, we saw, we see of the shootings and the fighting in Israel, Father God, and and the the death that can surround people and people can focus on it. The news has us focusing on the bad things of the world, Father God. But I ask that you allow us to focus on the good things of the world, Father God. We just pray for healing and protection um, around them. Put a shield of protection around our families. Um, 
make them realize or help them to realize, Father God, that it, it's you, it's you, Lord, that we are grateful for. It is you that are the gift of the season. Um, I pray for Cassandy's uncle, Tony, for continued health in his life. I don't know what the situation is, Father God, but you do. You know what healing he needs. You know, Lord Jesus, that if if it's from the inside, from the outside, whatever it may be, that you are the mighty physician and we trust you and we glorify you and we worship you, Lord Jesus, knowing that you can heal and you continue to heal him no matter what, Father God, no matter what the doctors may see, Father God, that you are his physician. And that is the only physician that we need. The only physician that we need to lean upon is you. And we stand on your word for his healing, Father God. We come in agreement knowing that he has already been healed by your stripes you have promised. And we stand on your promise. And it says, wherever two or more are gathered, Father God, we know that it will be so. It will be so because you tell us it is so. And that's all that we have to believe in. And when we waver here or there, Father God, we go to your word. We stand on your faith. We stand on your truth and in your word, knowing that you have us in the palm of your hands and that you care for us and you heal us and you will get us through each and every day. We thank you, for, Lord, for all that you do for each and every one of us. Um. I just thank you for all the sisters that are here, Lord Jesus, who have taken the time out of their day to be with us, to be here at this moment, to hear your word, Lord. I pray that you hide your word in their hearts, that you help them to go forth through the day or as they lay their head to rest, Father God, that you would bring them the peace that surpasses all understanding, knowing that your hand, that you are in control of the situation and that you give them strength. And it is inevitable, an inevitable event that you have already promised to get us through each and every situation, not by our strength, Lord Jesus, but by your strength. And we thank you and we glorify you and give you all the praise for allowing us to trust you and depend on you and lead on your word and trust that the Holy Spirit will guide us each and every step of the way. We thank you in Jesus' precious name. And we also pray for Mokisha, Lord Jesus. Lord, that situation is so hard um, as we've read over and over again, Lord, but it's not hard for you. You knitted her together. You created her, Father God, from the moment she was even a thought in her mother's head, Lord Jesus, that you um, created her to be uh, a perfect, perfect person, Father God. And we ask that you touch her body and that you would give the doctors wisdom to deal with this illness, this condition that they say that she has. We know and we trust in you for your stripes. She has been healed. Again, Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you and we trust you for um, allowing her mother to be there. We ask that you surround that room, that you fill that room with the holy presence of the Holy Spirit. Bring peace. Continue to We continue to lift up Makisha and Lakeisha. Um, that you continue to hold him with the palm of your hands, bringing a peace in that room, healing to Mokisha. And we stand in agreement that she shall, and she is healed because of your stripes in Jesus name. We pray. Amen. <laughs>